Good afternoon, everyone, and welcome back to another Lenten Reflection. Uh, can you believe that it's already halfway through Lent? Like, where has this Lent gone? I know it's been super fruitful and everything, but like, holy moly, we're just speeding through. Um, and yeah, uh, today is going to be a, a f reflection on uh, the beginning of the Passion. So this is about Jesus starting to realize um, and prepare everybody for the Passion that's coming on Easter, uh, or on Good Friday, and then the resurrection happens on Easter Sunday. Um, so we're going to just dive straight right into this. Because, uh, again, it's another dense, full one. I want to make sure that we hit everything that we need to. Um, so, again, it's going to be in the Gospel of John. So we've been sticking with John the past few weeks. Um, and because, you know, John's great for Lent. Because it's all about, like, super in-depth reflection on uh, Jesus' passion as well as ourselves. Um, John makes it super easy for us to recognize what's going on. Um, and... You know, it's, it's, it just gives a lot of perspective on Jesus's uh, views of the Passion um, and his own preparations for uh, his Good Friday, uh, Holy Saturday, and Easter Sunday. So this comes uh, from the chapter 12. So this is right after Jesus and the group enter into Jerusalem. Uh, so, you know, remember the whole, you know, celebration uh, that happens with Palm Sunday and everything where they lay the, the palm leaves down. Um, and that also, this was after Jesus has raised Lazarus from the dead. So he has already uh, uh, shown a lot of his power. This was, that was his last uh, official, um, uh, what is it called? That was his last official miracle that happens in the Gospel of John. Um, so now that Jesus' ministry is done, according to John, he's starting to prepare for uh, the big, the big part of of John, which is uh, the Paschal mystery, the death, resurrection of Jesus. So uh, we'll begin here with a reading from the Gospel of John. Now there were some Greeks among those who had come up to worship at the feast. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee. And asked him, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Amen, amen, I say to you, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies, it remains but a grain of wheat. But if it dies, it produces much fruit. Whoever loves his life loses it. And whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there also will be my servant. The Father will honor whoever serves me. I am troubled now. Yet what should I say? Father, save me from this hour? But it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and will glorify it again. The crowd there heard it and said it was thunder, but others said an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered and said, The, the voice did not come for my sake, but for yours. Now is the time of judgment on this world. Now the ruler of this world will be, will be driven out. And when I am lifted up from the earth, I will draw everyone to myself. He said this, indicating the kind of death that he would die. So, again, uh, this is John, so it's really prophetic. A lot of, uh, you know, like ominous, like foreshadowing for what's about to happen. Uh, and so uh, it's kind of weird because, you know, this is happening during the Passover. So, People from all over the Middle East have come back to Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. Passover being the feast celebrating uh, the book of Exodus where the angel of death passed over the people um, that marked their, their doors with lamb's blood uh, in order that they might be saved from Pharaoh uh, and enter the promised land. So this is important. That whole story was an, it was in preparation for Jesus 
who is the sacrificial lamb, the paschal lamb, uh, that God ultimately sends so that they might be saved from the angel of death, uh, the angel of death in this case, in this case being death itself, as we see with Jesus resurrecting Lazarus, you know, he has power over death. Um, and then uh, being freed from Pharaoh that they might enter the promised land. So Pharaoh was always an allegory for Satan. Uh, and so in Satan, evil, sinfulness, uh, our, our, our condemnation towards death, like we talked about last week, where, you know, like we, are, because of our sinfulness, have earned death. Uh, but only Christ can conquer that. Uh, and so that's what he comes here for, is to save us, to help pass over that angel, and that we might be brought through the waters of baptism into the promised land, which is heaven. And so there's a lot going into this this reading right here. Um, but So here the Greeks, uh, probably devout Jews looking for Jesus, who have heard about uh, what he's been doing, uh, ask, you know, what, ask about Jesus, want to know more about him. So they ask the apostles to go find him. Um, and Jesus enters into the coming of his own hour. Uh, that's what the title of this chapter is, is, is it's the coming of Jesus's hour. Uh, and I think this is very, very powerful, um, because it shows how committed Jesus is, uh, to what he's about to do. Uh, it says, the hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. All right, this also is a tie back to the beginning of the gospel uh, at the wedding of Cana. You know, uh, Mary tells Jesus to perform a miracle to start his ministry. Uh, and he says, uh, woman, how does your concern affect me? My hour has not yet come. Um, this is not Jesus being uh, rude or mean to his mother who is, you know, Mary, great greatest woman to have ever lived, you know, sinless, perfect. Um, she says, it, he, he asks her, you know, that wasn't him dismissing her, but asking, is it time? Is it, it is, are we about to start this mission? Um, and Mary confirms that by saying, just do whatever he tells you. So here Jesus is saying the hour has come. Now we have arrived to what is about to go down for Jesus. Um, and so he, we hear this, you know, there's a there's a great song that we sing at mass sometimes you know like uh, the uh, unless a grain of wheat falls to the ground and dies it remains just a single grain of wheat um, but if it dies it produces much fruit and so here Jesus is just showing you know in order that what he has come to accomplish um, occurs he has to die he has to sacrifice himself in order to save us from death. So Jesus came on our behalf to take what was ours. So sinfulness and death itself, you know, he took that on himself um, in order that we might be saved from it. Um, and in return, we receive what was due to him, which is sonship or daughtership with God, um, complete union with God um, and mending this rift that had, been around in humanity since Adam and Eve's fall. This is called the great exchange. Um, and some people have referred to it as, oh, oh, happy fault. You know, like, even though the fall of man into sinfulness was awful um, and it separated us from God, uh, through Jesus becoming a man, taking on humanity itself and raising it back to God, uh, we have uh, entered into an even more personal relationship with God than before. Uh, and so I think this is this is really powerful in showing like Jesus now knows what's going to happen. He knows that he's going to have to die um, and sacrifice himself for humanity. Uh, and he puts on he puts on a strong face. You know, he's he says he's ready for it. Um, and he also prepares the apostles who will also have to follow uh, Jesus's uh, sacrifice um, later in life with whoever loves his life loses it and whoever hates his life in this world will preserve it for eternal life whoever serves me must follow me and where i am here where i am being you know having died and been raised into heaven sacrificing themselves for the kingdom um, there also my servant will be 
So Jesus being glorified through his sacrifice calls everybody back into him in heaven. Uh, and then the Father will honor whoever serves me. You know, so this is like the, the this is the great promise. You know, like it's going to be difficult. Jesus never promises that following him is going to be easy. Um, he does say, you know, like follow, come follow me, all who are weary, and I will give you rest. Uh, and you know, for my yoke is easy and my burden is light. Um, and this is true. When we work with Jesus. It is easy because it when you love something or when you love doing something, it doesn't feel very hard. If you love farming, uh, even though that's an extremely like hard process to go through, I know because like my family is farmers, uh, it's it's a lot of work and it's exhausting. Uh, but if you love doing that or you're doing it for somebody that you love, it doesn't feel as tiring. So this is what Jesus is saying: If you do this out of love for me and with me, yes. It might be difficult, but it won't feel as bad uh, because you're doing it out of love. And so here Jesus is like reaffirming this by saying, you know, like life is going to be difficult if you follow me uh, because look at my life. If you want to model your life after me, this is this is the cost. This is the, the cost of love uh, is giving up everything for it. Uh, and I think the next part, too, is really, really important. You know, Jesus says, I am troubled now, yet what should I say? Here Jesus is saying to everybody there, you know, like, guys, I'm scared. Jesus himself is saying that he's afraid of what's to happen. He is scared to die. He doesn't want to die. And I think this is a completely beautiful thing to be included in the Gospels and for Jesus to have admitted, you know, the, the amount of humility it takes for God himself, Jesus, to say, I'm afraid, I'm scared of dying. I think that's very powerful and it helps me, you know, specifically, you know, when we have difficult times or when we're afraid to do something that we know we have to do, it's a good thing but it's difficult. It's okay to admit you're afraid, but it's not okay to just stop there. Fear happen, Fear is an emotion, and Jesus felt emotion, so he understands. He was there. He says it right here, uh, but we still have to do what is good and just, and the Father will glorify us uh, through this. And Jesus says that, you know, Father, save me from this hour, but it was for this purpose that I came to this hour. And I think... Uh, you know, this is like the heart of the message for today's gospel reading. Like, should I say, Father, save me from this hour, even though I was created for this? Uh, we, we hear this in the, in the book of Esther. Uh, you know, you were created for such a time as this. Uh, this is to Esther, uh, a, a Jewish woman who basically God is telling her, if you don't do something, the Jewish people are going to be eradicated from earth uh so you need you were created for this moment to save and to help god's people and what better way to reflect on this than the place that we find ourselves in now uh if you can even believe it a year ago today the united states closed down uh because of the coronavirus we had to go in, into quarantine a year ago today. Um, and, you know, that's, it blows my mind to even think about it. Uh, but here in this scripture reading, God gives us uh, hope and it gives us uh, a game plan for what we need to do. You know, yeah, times are hard. It troubles us. It's, it might even scare us. There's been a lot of fear that have ha has happened in the past year. A lot of difficult things have occurred um, from many avenues, but especially, you know, the coronavirus. We've lost a lot of people in the world uh, to this, this disease. Um, and it is troubling and it is scary. Uh, but here Jesus is reaffirming us, you know, it was for this purpose that we came to this hour. So you are being told by Jesus here in this scripture reading that you were created for this moment. 
there was absolutely no mistake that you were born for a time such as this, that you were here to bring about God's kingdom during the time that we are in now. And it is all for the glory of God. And so through these difficult times, through COVID specifically, you know, we need to hold on to that and to remember that it's okay to be scared. It's okay to have all these feelings, but we were also created for this time. Jesus trusts us. You know, we spend so much time throughout our lives wondering, do we believe in God? Do we trust God to live, to help us live our lives and to bring good things into our lives? You know, and that's, that's okay. That's important. That's, that's part of the process is, you know, building relationships with people. We have to have those discussions with ourselves and, and to start to figure out how far do we trust this person? Um, but it's important to remember Jesus believes in you. God believes in you. God trusts you with the moment that he's given. He knows that you can choose whatever you want. You can do whatever path you choose. You can choose to completely try and throw off his, his plan for the world. Um, you can, he knows that you could completely deny him, um, choose not to love him, um, squander your life inheritance like the prodigal son. Um, but God still trusts you. He gives you the power to live your life and to do something good with it. Uh, you know, C.S. Lewis has this amazing quote that I always reflect on. It's, uh, what God has given to you, or what, who you are is God's gift to you. Who you become at the end of your life is your gift back to him. So God creates us uh, and makes us who we are. That's, that's a given. We can't make ourselves. Uh, but who we turn out to be, what we do with our lives, what we do, what we've been given to us, is our gift back to God. Uh, and we bring that before him uh, when we die. And I think this is very important to remember. You know, we, If we are created for this moment, that means nobody else is going to do something about it except for us. We can't wait on other people to do something great. Uh, we can't keep looking out for these amazing saints because the saints are us. We are being called to be saints. If we don't do something, the work of God doesn't get done in the world. Just reflect on that. We are the body of Christ. If we don't do something about the world that we're in, God's work will not get done because God gives us the power to do it. God could very easily and with it, like way quicker, just end it all right there, fix all the problems of the world. But we would gain nothing from that. And God doesn't want us to be just the people that we are now. He knows that we need work. He's very patient. He's very kind. Uh, he knows us better than we ourselves know. Uh, and he wants us to grow. And he wants us to have the opportunity to have a role in salvation. He wants us to share in the spotlight. He wants us uh, to do something great. He want, You know, like a dad watching their son uh, like score a touchdown or you know, win a spelling bee or some other great achievement, you know, like fathers want that they want to be proud of their 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 child and so here god is like saying you know this is a difficult time but i know you can do it i trust you and i love you and i'm here with you always but you have to be the one to do it because i can't do this for you and jesus is the perfect example of how we do this because jesus knows this and accepts his fate and does what he needs to do in order to glorify God. Uh, and then I just wanted to end the reflection here with the, this this last part um, of, you know, of this voice coming from heaven and being indiscernible to some, but others know it's an angel. You know, uh, this is very important uh, for when, for us as Christians to reflect on. Because it's about 
how not everybody is ready to hear God's voice. You know, we all, obviously we want people to know Jesus, know God, um, but not everybody is equipped to do that yet. Not everybody has the ears to hear or eyes to see. Um, and we need to be able to walk with people who are not ready to hear God's voice. Uh, so we need to be good representatives of Christ uh, it, to walk with people for where they're at, but not remain there. We cannot allow people to remain in sin. We are always calling each other to more. Uh, and so we want people to be able to commune with God, to know God's voice. Um, and so just remember your Christian duty uh, to continue to help people to discern the will of God and the word of God, God's very voice in the world. Because uh, it's very easy to attribute a lot of thoughts and feelings and emotions and other people's ideas um, to many different things. Um, but when we grow as Christians, grow as adults, we begin to fine-tune our hearing to the Word of God to be able to hear Him better. So it's not just that rumbling thunder from heaven, uh, but it's that quiet, still voice uh, that is talked about in Kings, uh, this intimate connection that we have with God the Father through our sonship with Christ the Son um, being interceded and connected by the Holy Spirit we have a connection with God and the Holy Spirit is constantly praying within us, connecting us to God the Father and God the Son. But we need to grow in order to be ready to hear God's voice. So uh, with this reflection, I just want to leave you with this question. You know, Will you be like Jesus in this time that we found ourselves in? God is asking us the same question that he asked Jesus all these years ago in this reading. You know, I know what I'm asking you is hard. I know that in many ways we will be asked the same question that Jesus is and dying to ourselves in some way, in some capacity, uh, giving up our lives for the sake of another, laying down our lives for another. Um, but will you respond like Jesus did? Will you say, this is the purpose that I came to this hour and re return God's question with, Father, glorify your name. Let your will be done, not mine. Or will we continue to live in darkness? Will we continue to allow or to be like Peter, walking on the water and getting distracted by the storm and not returning our gaze to Jesus because G Peter was able to walk on water, guys. But he was only, he only fell underneath the waves once he turned his gaze away from God. So, brothers and sisters, let's remember this as we go forward this week. How will we respond to this time we are in? Will we be like Jesus? Will we say, Father, glorify your name through me? Or will we turn away? Everybody has a plan in the salvation of the kingdom of God. Everybody has a place in the body of God, of Christ. Everybody has a role to play in the continuation of the kingdom. But we can either be like Peter, or we can be like Judas, and it's up for us to decide. So, uh, pretty heavy topic today, uh, but, you know, we're getting closer to Holy the Holy Week. Uh, we have to be ready for everything that's about to happen. Good Friday is a hard day. Um, you can't have Easter Sunday without Good Friday. Uh, and so as we continue to go persevere through these difficult times that we find ourselves in, remember that we are made for this. Nobody else can fix this um, except for us because if they were, God would have already sent them. God is asking you to take the reins and to help him. God doesn't need help, but he wants help. He wants your help. What is going to be your response? Until then, guys, I will see you next week and have a blessed week.